All right, so I'm here with the rig CNC mill. Uh, the goal is to characterize the spring force constant of the mill itself. So for this initial test, um, I guess the things to know are the, you can see here, the subplate and also the plate below it in the previous video, which you can see are both still plastic. Um, so this is the kind of 3D printed version of this mill. Um, the one caveat in this first test uh, this plate over here, which is out of focus at the moment, but the plate over here is uh, aluminum. So this is the one that we're kind of testing right now. So this, this should be a good comparison between the two readings I'm going to take. Um, so if I refocus on the dial here, I've got an indicator mounted uh, to the Y assembly, um, which is mechanically decoupled from the Z assembly, which is what I'm going to be measuring so that the uh, the flex of the Z should not independently affect the Y, and that, that's why I feel comfortable mounting it straight to the linear rail. So what I plan on doing is I've got a force gauge here. I can apply a force and it will read for me. Um, I'm going to apply, I plan on applying 50 newtons, which uh, is like 5 kilograms of force, um, ten, a little over 10 pounds. Um, and I'm going to use that kind of as a basis. So if I plan on taking a cut that is going to apply 10 pounds to the mill, it, I can know about how much I can expect uh, the mill to flex, and that, that should be a useful bit of information uh, when calculating speeds and feeds and just understanding how this mill is going to behave. Um, so right now I'm measuring in the x-axis direction, um, and just watch the indicator I guess. So I will pull here, and that is 50 newtons, and it looks like that is what, four, four thousandths of deflection, um, and that's in the Z column in the X direction. So that has a spring force constant, which I can throw up on the screen now because I can do math after the fact, um, and that will hopefully be some insight. Um, and this is with, again, kind of the aluminum version of the plate. So I'm just going to rearrange this here so I can measure in the Y direction and get an understanding of how that axis performs. Alright, so I have this roughly zeroed out. It's kind of, uh, it's difficult to film this at this funky angle, but I'm going to, again, apply 50 newtons of force and measure this time in this uh, y-axis direction. So, put this guy on. That is 50 newtons. And the deflection in this axis is much lower. Uh, so I would say that's, you know, less than a, a thousandth, um, which is kind of to be expected. Um, there's much less going on there. There's no left to right play. Um, so when the mill is cutting and it is in a cut, uh, I would expect this axis, you know, this, this travel direction to be much more rigid. And that usually comes out in uh, the cut. You, know, you can see a certain direction of your mill is going to chatter more than the other. So I would expect traveling this way to be more chatter prone than traveling this way. And realistically, when you're taking you know, 3D adaptive cuts and stuff, uh, the forces are kind of constantly spinning around. So you're going to be going, dep depending on the direction of travel, uh, the, the forces are going to be somewhere between, you know, one spring constant and the other spring constant. So usually you go for the uh, weakest link, so to speak. And right now it seems like the X direction is the weakest link. So I'm going to reconfigure this again. I'm going to swap where this is, move it up here, since the Z axis and the Y X axis are decoupled. Um, and I'm going to do the same test. So I'm going to pull on this screw head and measure the deflection to get a spring constant for these two components. So I'll have a spring constant for the Z assembly, and I'll have a spring constant for the XY assembly. Uh, and those two should give me an understanding of kind of the general rigidity of the mill. Um, this, these two are going to be plastic plates, so I expect them to be worse. Um, but I guess this is a good validation. So. So here I've got the mounted to the Z column, or mounted to the Z head, coming down and touching a screw over here. So you can see this is fairly sensitive. I mean, I'm applying a decent amount of force with my finger, but 
I can tell already this is much less stiff, which is, you know, like I said, to be expected with the plastic parts. So here, again, just a normal force gauge. I'm gonna hook underneath this guy and apply 50 newtons of force. Now let's see, what is that at? Looks like in the realm of maybe seven. And there's a bit of a, you know, spring back to this, so what is that? That's 50 newtons, maybe seven or eight thousandths of movement, so a good deal worse. And I expect this axis to be the worst since it kind of has the largest moment arm to deal with. Um, I'm going to reconfigure this now so that I'm looking at the, the Y axis. All right, so you can see now, it's, again, it's kind of hard to see, and I'm sure there's some kind of parallax with it, but um, I can poke this and get a response. So this is measuring the delta between the Z column and the direction of Y axis travel. So same test as before, 50 newtons, five kilograms. You pull on this guy, that is 50 newtons. And it looks like that is, what, seven-ish? So it, it seems like the plastic is pretty consistent. That's about seven thousandths of travel or movement. So at a 50 Newton force, it's about seven thousandths. And that should indicate kind of how rigid the mill is. So, you know, with this whole coupling, um, I should be paying attention to my cut forces and making sure the, um, you know, the cut forces are sufficiently low uh, so that I'm not, you know, it, basically what this means is if I try to take a cut that is 10 pounds of cutting force, this thing is going to move seven thousandths. And usually that's bad when you're trying to take a deep cut. Um, so spring force tends to be linear. I'll probably plot this on a graph um, and you guys can get a sense of it. And then the more interesting test will be once I swap these out, um, for aluminum, kind of comparing the cut results. So I'll take a few cuts with plastic before I swap everything out because I don't plan on swapping back ever. Um, but I'll take a few cuts, I'll get that on video, and we can kind of compare the two and see, it. you know, is aluminum that much better, you know, or uh, if plastic's good enough, and just get an understanding of if you try to 3D print a mill, how, how rigid can you get it. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.